Welcome back, Astro listeners, to Star Lady Soul Reader Network. This is Media Monk, and as usual, I have our shining star of the Zodiac on the line. It's Star Lady. Hi, Star Lady. Hello, Media Monk. And we all remember Star Lady is Kim Marie, the managing director for the Evolutionary Astrology Network. EAN continues to certify new evolutionary astrologers worldwide through our EA course. And you can kind of go to our website to get more information about that signature course, uh, as well as, uh, oh, we have other things like forecasting webinars that we create from time to time uh, of the Astro Library. Uh, go to our podcast page there and review this um, Full Moon podcast and other podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. Or call 605-348-5111 for not only uh, – more information about all the website and everything, but you can also schedule some time with Kim Marie with a summer session of, of EA reading. All right, so with that, uh, I guess I'll turn it over to you, Star Lady, and uh, welcome everyone. Thanks, Media Monk. All right, it just so happens that we are recording this full moon of Capricorn podcast the day after the full moon. And uh, what a difference a day makes if you're, you, you have to be utterly underground <laughs> if you don't know what's happened in the United States in the last uh, 24 hours. Um, the fact that Joe Biden has decided to not seek re-election and endorsed um, Kamala Harris. Um, our summer schedule can get really busy with a variety of things. And so I'm grateful that we were too busy to record the podcast before all this broke out. Um, I actually looked up the bi wheel um, in astrology. You can take a chart and then you can put another chart around it. So I found out the news uh, with Biden yesterday uh, Sunday the 21st, a couple hours after that full moon, I found out, I heard it on the news about 11.10 in the morning. And so um, I did a bywheel of the transits around Joe Biden's natal chart. And so that full moon of Capricorn was um, early in the morning across the United States. It was at 29 degrees, sun in Cancer, moon in Capricorn. The full moon of Capricorn has a tendency to take, especially at 29 degrees, you know, the, the last degree of the signs. The full moon of Capricorn has a tendency to take all of the emotions that have been building up, and in this case, 30 days of sun in Cancer, we've had 30 days of emotional buildup, and it was, it's been three weeks since Joe Biden fell off a cliff with his debate. And so that moon in Capricorn has a tendency to just bring all those emotions up and out, and then how are we going to settle down into the practicalities of Capricorn? So moon in its opposite sign of rulership, uh, Capricorn, it's saying, okay, no time for emotions here. We've got to get down to business. We've got to just go with what is real, Capricorn. And I kind of think that's some of what happened here um, over the weekend with um, Joe Biden. Um, I think most of the listeners on this podcast, especially long-time listeners, know where I'm at politically. I'm forgiving, sharing, and including, as I like to call it. And so very, very grateful that he could see the light and energize the Democratic Party. I, I, I didn't get to see the debate because we were out camping, and so I read about it afterwards, and I went into my own kind of Capricorn depression and just gave up hope of Biden winning after that debate. And I guess that maybe a few others did too, huh? But anyway, what a difference 24 hours makes. Um, $80 million raised by... 
Harris campaign in the 24 hours since all this happened. I think there's a huge coalition. Um, Vice presidential candidate, um, Media Monk came up with a really good suggestion that I have never thought of, and that was uh, Senator Mark Kelly from Arizona, whose own wife also survived an assassination attempt that was a lot worse than the one to Trump. Um, don't agree with any of it. I, I'm a person who thinks we need to have very strict gun control laws. Anyway, he's got a lot of um, remarkable things to his background as a, a veteran and a war pilot and an astronaut and, you know, um, coming down on the border and saying we need to do something about it, a variety of things. So he's one of them. Um, another one that I hear is, is Josh Shapiro. Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, this, uh, has already put out there that she will not accept any nomination. She wants to just be governor. Um, there may be some others out there as well. Stay tuned. I'm sure we'll find out who is going to be that VP pick somewhere along the line. But anyway, I said that I looked up the by will on, on Biden's chart. Um, November 20th, 1942, 8.30 a.m. in the morning in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, we've known as astrologers that Pluto moving into Aquarius will be making last quarter squares to his moon in Taurus here in 2024 and after that debate happened I went wait a minute at in at an 8:30 a.m. birth time transiting Pluto retrograde in Aquarius is going to make the second of three squares to his moon July 18th July 19th depending upon what time you think it is well Pluto is still was it's still minutes from squaring his moon and you know Pluto, it is just the death and rebirth. It doesn't take no prisoners. <laughs> what needs to be released with Pluto when it no longer serves our soul will go one way or another. So I am very grateful to Biden for seeing the light and recognizing it on an emotional level with Pluto Square's moon. That's to be a very hard thing to do personally. What was interesting is around that 11 a.m. Eastern time when, oh, I got to put a different my will up. I did 11 a.m. Eastern time. And it was 11 a.m. Mountain time that I found out. So my my wheel is going to be a little off, but I can adjust it for myself a little bit real quick here. Point is that full moon that happened early July 21st at 29 Capricorn, that moon moved into Aquarius, went over Pluto, and the moon and the sun, that full moon, was squaring his natal moon also yesterday morning at the same time. So just as I said earlier, that full moon of Capricorn says, we have to get down to business. We have to get down with what's real. We may feel differently about it emotionally, but this is what is practical Capricorn. And I think Joe Biden finally had enough people around him that saw the light transiting mercury is in leo it is on his chiron in leo on his north node in leo there was the courage to speak out released it in a letter mercury regardless of how wounding it was for him he did it transiting mercury in leo was square his son in lake scorpio Another, you know, last quarter squares are crises in consciousness. And so just the realization that was really deeply coming on for him. 
Venus in Leo was just past a conjunction to his Pluto in Leo. Um, he's an eighth house Pluto, by the way. Cherished, cherished ideals of what he wanted to do in his presidency and that reality with, you know, Venus of, again, the powerful sweep of the eighth house. Pluto rules the eighth house, the Scorpio house. But said, this is not going to work for you, buddy, anymore with any of your, no matter how strong your desire and nature is. You got it. You got the presidency, but you're not going to keep it. And then Mars, just fresh off of its conjunction with Uranus in late Taurus, which a week ago had uh, so much to do with the assassination attempt with um, Donald Trump. Um, Mars was in, went into Gemini here. Uh, hold on just a second. Get my little... Mars went into Gemini on the 20th, so on the 21st yesterday, when the letter Gemini, Mercury Rule, came out, Mars was just approaching his Uranus at 2 degrees Gemini. Jupiter at 12 Gemini was on his Saturn at 9 in Gemini. Um, almost all of it in the, ninth, in the seventh house of relationships, and so the whole world, seventh house of relationships, all heard the news. At the same time when the letter was released publicly a comment on Donald Trump's assassination attempt again what will it take before we have common sense gun laws you don't have to go as far as I want but when will we have common sense gun laws I found it quite interesting you know Uranus Mars aspects can be violent And Mars made a conjunction to Uranus July 15th. Um, The shooting happened two days earlier, Saturday the 13th, so it was there in that orb. At 26 degrees Taurus, it could have so easily, easily been death of Taurus. But I also will make the comment that you reap what you sow. Trump was extremely lucky, although it may not feel that way right now with what the Democrats just did. You know, he lambasted Nancy Pelosi's husband when he was almost hammered to death. He called for his military chief of staff, Mark Milley, to be assassinated when the Atlantic Magazine did a major article on uh, Mark Milley. You can go research it, M-I-L-L-E-Y. You know, he was the chief of staff that was in his um, military uniform when Trump made everybody leave the White House and walk down and pose in front of a church, and and Donald Trump had a Bible. Um, I would I would say if you're interested, it was an excellent article that Mark Milley did. You can go read that. And then there was another person, I can't remember who, but all the times that Trump has spoke such mean and cruel words to other people and, you know, basically saying gun him down. What does he expect to have happen? And then the young kid turned out to have Republican parents, or at least the dad, I think, turned out to be conservative himself from his friends. Interesting. I didn't do a bywheel on when that happened with Donald Trump. I might dig that one out for curiosity reasons, but just thought I'd give you a few tidbits on the news that happened that has all of a sudden made... Democrats absolutely ecstatic and enthusiastic and turned the Republican Party upside down on its head after their convention was over. Uh, By the way, The Atlantic had a really good article recently about the two people who are running Donald Trump's re-election campaign. And... uh, um, another one would be interesting to read. Of course, it's all now yesterday's news with how everything has changed. Stay tuned. We'll see how that goes. Astrologists have kind of thought 
with Pluto going into Aquarius, and yes, it's going to be retrograde back into Capricorn. By the way, um, e, uh, the Jeffrey Wolf Green uh, Association of Evolutionary Astrologers is going to have their online conference again um, October 3rd through the 6th. I will actually be doing a lecture on Pluto at 30 degrees Capricorn and the presidential election. And of course, back to my point that I was going to make, by the way, that will be in our newsletter if you want the details. And they're offering um, a discounted rate for enrollments through July 31st. So we'll get that information in our newsletter, note to Media Monk. Um, Anyway, astrologers have been saying with Pluto and Aquarius that it's going to shake things up. You know, Aquarius rules that individuated unconsciousness, but it also then relates to things busting up into the surface when there needs to be a shift, when there needs to be a change, when we need to break free. I, I have... I have four words for Aquarius in general, and I'm making them my Pluto and Aquarius words. I think I've mentioned this in more recent podcasts. Detach, objectify, liberate, and innovate. So detaching from the immediacy of any shocking event, objectifying it as broadly as you can, and then making a change, breaking free from the past, and then finding a new way to go forward. So detach, objectify, liberate, innovate. That's kind of that foundational energy that's just said Pluto and Aquarius is going to shake things up. And lo and behold, we just had it. There may be more to come yet. Who knows what's in store for us between now and then. And I also said, oh, by the way, on EA Zoom's YouTube channel, I literally participated in a panel yesterday morning. There were two panels. I was the second one. The Biden News, not running for re-election, broke during the first panel. The second panel, we got started, and it, it was hard to talk about anything else. So um, EA Zoom on YouTube, go hear what we had to say on the subject in a little more detail if you would like to. Uh, Stay tuned. We'll see what else Pluto and Aquarius is going to surprise us with as we go forward. Of course, as we are recording uh, this podcast, we have the sun now in the first degree of Leo, and that Leo mantra is, I align my will with divine will. I align my will with divine will. Sun rules Leo in the fifth house. This is the ego of our own subjective universe where we try to find our courage and will our way forward in creating something in our world. And the polarity of that Aquarius is, again, where you have to step back and see that larger picture and ask, well, how does my will fit in? And how are we going to align it with divine will? Um, Jeffrey Green's teachings would many times say, well, Uranus in health and wellness astrology will actually represent the brain, the physical part of our brain. Uranus Aquarius in the 11th house can also represent the brain of universal source. And that can be that divine will of source. So that's where I created the mantra, I align my will with divine will. And that's how you move your way through over this next solar month of Sun and Leo and all of the fun and games we want to have in our summer times. Also, as that Sun moves into Leo, July 23rd, Sun makes its opposition to Pluto retrograde at Sun 1 Leo, Pluto retrograde just shy of 1 degree Aquarius. This is the halfway point of Pluto's five-month retrograde cycle. So this is the aha moment when 
a planet has its conjunction or opposition to the sun. The sun is shining the light of day on that retrograde planet. What are we recognizing about ourselves? What are we recognizing about the desire nature within our soul? And with Pluto retrograde, what desires are in our consciousness that just no longer serve us? Where are we having to Pluto retrograde, release, let go, review what it is we really want in our life? And as that makes sense to us, then how does that sun in Leo carry that energy forward? How does it express itself and move forward with it? We also, right on the heels of that in a couple of days, have Mercury moving into Virgo. We're getting ready for our Mercury retrograde. Oh, by the way, Media Monk, I know you're just going to be so tickled pink with me. Um, Our Mercury retrograde class is going to be Wednesday, July 31st. Mercury retrograde in um, Virgo Leo. Mercury's retrograde August 4th through August 28th. Those retrograde at 4 degrees Virgo and direct at 21 Leo. Here we go again. One more Mercury retrograde. Stay tuned. We'll have more on that with our webinar coming up um, next week. But Mercury at Virgo, you know, this is the inner side of Mercury, as I say, because um, Virgo is passive polarity or yin, yin energy. And, and, and so Mercury at Virgo, you know, it loves it here. This is where we dig in and tear things apart and really analyze and, you know, try to figure out how to self-improve, how to make something better. Well, Mercury's going to go into Virgo, retrograde back into Leo, and then go into Virgo again. So chances are, typically when Mercury has a retrograde with two signs, we find that Mercury will be in each of those signs somewhere like 40 to 45 days. This is going to be a long passage, Mercury in Virgo once, and then later on twice once it's direct again. So Even though we have some of that Sun and Leo fun and games energy, I just want to go play. We also have Mercury and Virgo going, oh, we might have to balance it with work once in a while. We might have to balance it with some of our responsibilities once in a while. Oh, we might have to pay attention to that diet, exercise, and rest routine that we know so well with the archetype of Virgo. How well can you make peace with that? Mercury is in Virgo July 25th. It retrogrades back to Leo on August 14th in the middle of its retrograde cycle. And then, before July is over, Chiron turns stationary retrograde in the heavens. Chiron goes retrograde July 26th at 23 and a half degrees Virgo, or excuse me, Aries, sorry, It has a five-month retrograde cycle as well. Chiron will go direct December 29th at about 19 degrees Aries. Chiron turning retrograde in Aries, you know, it's long, almost eight-year cycle through Aries is very much a chance for us to initiate Aries. New healing routines for ourselves. That would be some of the bigger intent of Chiron in Aries. But what we have to be careful of uh, in the distortions of Chiron in Aries is playing victim and then being angry. Oh, does that remind you of a presidential candidate by any chance? You know, um, it's that time of the season again where we start talking about the U.S. election, thank you, international listeners, for listening. Uh, you know, Donald Trump loves to play victim. So as Chiron turns retrograde, I expect him to try and draw that attention back to himself. Who knows if he, you know, is he going to manifest some complication in his ear or whatever mm. for all of us in general? 
be careful of wanting to play victim. Be careful of your anger coming out with yourself and others. And I sometimes say, it's not an absolute, but I will sometimes say, especially if people are not honoring of um, healthy boundaries, anger sometimes lets us know when our boundaries are being imposed or impinged upon. We get angry at an an injustice. We can get angry if someone isn't treating us fairly. We can have the distortions of anger if we're trying to control and manipulate, especially trying to be an angry victim. So be a little careful of, of that one in your world. You know, winding down, I will just say, as our inner planets, Mercury leading the way, Venus following, and then the sun, uh, Mercury on that full moon was just hours after the full moon, so eh, it'd be after the Biden letter. Mercury made a waxing square to Uranus, um, Sunday, July 21st, 26 and a half, Leo, Mercury... 26 and a half Horus Uranus and you know there there's another one of those mercurial shocks Mercury Uranus when the announcement came from uh, President Biden Venus is going to make that waxing square to Uranus on August 2nd at about 27 degrees Venus Leo Uranus um, 27 Taurus. Uranus isn't going to go retrograde until uh, September 1st, and it's going to be just past that 27 degree mark of Taurus. So we already have Uranus starting to slow down for its own retrograde cycle. More on uh, that in a little bit. Those retrograde planets are going to start increasing here up until the time Pluto goes direct in early October. Venus waxing square Uranus, there can be some clashes with our value systems. Um, You know, if we're in relationships, I value this, you value that. How do we communicate about this following Mercury square to Uranus? And how do we compromise and find a way to, you know, appreciate each other well enough with our value systems? You know, it is possible that for some people, they will recognize their values are so incompatible that they... It just doesn't work in a relationship anymore. Venus can bring, Venus Uranus hits can bring sudden attractions and sudden breakups in those intimate relationships. And of course, as we probably spoke in the last podcast, it seems like a lifetime ago in our busy summers, Mars went into Gemini just before the full moon, July 20th through September 4th. Mars in Gemini, busy, busy, busy. Communications, events, you know, all, it it sometimes can be hard to stay in tune with everything. And what did we have in an early uh, Mars transit that, I can't remember what it was called, CrowdStrike or something, something with Microsoft on the Internet. I didn't pay too much attention to that. I had other things going on in my world. Um, um, You know, the, 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 the big blackouts uh, in the transportation arena and other places. We didn't have any of it here for us, but that can be also that Mars square to Uranus because Uranus rules technology in general and it co-rules electricity with Mercury and Mars going into Mercury sign Gemini. That can bring mix up in the electrical world, in the technological world. Who knows? Mars and Gemini might have, Gemini might have more things yet for us 
And so it might be important once in a while to slow down and breathe. Gemini is breath in. Polarity Sagittarius is breath out. Gemini takes information in. Polarity Sagittarius makes sense of the information. So with Mars in Gemini, if you find yourself running around too fast, too much, remember, slow down, take a breath. If you're teenage girls, in our case, niece, ask you to take them to the beach on a sunny summer afternoon, you drop everything and you go to the beach because teenagers don't have time for adults. Although in our case, we were the adults with the, <laughs> with the wheels and the kayaks. And we had a beautiful, beautiful, sunny Saturday day with our teenagers and so grateful for it. And so point is, find some time to rest and breathe deep through Mars and Gemini and all of the activity with Pluto uh, retrograde in Aquarius. When was that Mars Pluto trine? July 21st. Same day as the full moon of Capricorn. Later in the day after the Joe Biden letter came out. So, yeah, might be a little busy for us all right now. One more time. Slow down, breathe, process through it best as you can. All right, Media Monk, I'll take a breath. <laughs> Comment? Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, breathe deep. Everybody breathe deep, including Star Lady. So thanks for tuning in, everybody, on this uh, Full Moon podcast. Remember, uh, if, you're not, if, you, if you're not on our Astro newsletter list, you're going to want to go to the bottom of any page on the website and just kind of sign up with your e- name and email. And uh, we'll get all the information out on the announcements in this podcast. So until next time. Meet with, uh, move with joy and passion on this ever-expanding journey to the core of our souls. Thanks for tuning in.